Hades from Disney's Hercules is undeniably one of the most entertaining villains you'll come across in any animated film. His character is packed with personality, featuring snappy comebacks, wickedly dark humor, and a fiery temper that's quite literal, given his association with the underworld. In this video, let's dive deeper into his backstory and explore what makes his character so intriguing and complex. How are things in the underworld? Well, they're just fine, you know, a little dark, a little gloomy, and as always, hey, full of dead people, what are you gonna do? Although we know him primarily as the villain in the movie, Hades wasn't always the way he is portrayed. He started out as just another member of the Olympian family, which adds a layer of depth to his character. However, things took a significant turn for him during a crucial moment when the gods were deciding who would rule over various parts of the world. In this power distribution, Zeus, being the king of the gods, got to rule the skies, while Poseidon, his brother, was granted dominion over the seas. Unfortunately for Hades, he ended up with the underworld, a choice that left him with the least appealing job of all. This assignment meant that he would be responsible for overseeing the souls of the dead, a role that not many would envy. The really unfortunate part about Hades' situation is that he didn't have the option to refuse this role. He was essentially forced into it and once he found himself in the underworld, there was no turning back. This lack of agency certainly contributes to his character's frustration and resentment. When we compare his job to the glamorous and powerful positions held by his brothers, it's easy to see why he feels the way he does. While Zeus rules over the magnificent skies and Poseidon commands the vast beautiful seas, Hades is stuck in a dark isolated realm that is far from glamorous. The underworld is not a place filled with joy and light, rather, it's characterized by shadows and gloom. It's a place filled with spirits who are either lost, suffering, or simply miserable. So, just imagine how tough it would be to spend eternity surrounded by such an atmosphere. The weight of this responsibility, combined with the dreariness of his surroundings, undoubtedly contributes to his sharp wit and sarcastic demeanor. He spends his time in the underworld mostly surrounded by the shades of the dead and his two rather incompetent minions, pain and panic. Unfortunately for him, they aren't exactly great conversationalists, which can make for a pretty lonely existence. On top of that, Hades feels like a complete outsider even among his own family. There's a scene in the movie where he crashes a party that's celebrating the birth of Hercules, and it's crystal clear just how uncomfortable and out of place he feels among the other gods. How sentimental. You know, I haven't been this choked up since I got a hunk of moussaka caught in my throat. Huh? His siblings, Zeus, Poseidon, and the rest, never really welcomed him into their inner circle. Instead, they viewed him as someone who belonged in the dark and shadowy corners of the world, far away from the bright and shiny halls of Olympus. This treatment has to hurt, especially for someone who is a part of the family but feels completely alienated from it. It's almost as if the underworld is not just a domain he oversees. It also symbolizes how his brothers perceive him after centuries of being left alone in that gloomy place. This sense of isolation has a profound impact on his character and his motivations. While he's stuck in the underworld, he begins to plot an ambitious plan to take over Mount Olympus. He knows that if he wants to succeed in his quest for power, he needs to be careful because there's a hero out there who could easily ruin his plans. That hero turns out to be none other than baby Hercules. Realizing that Hercules poses a significant threat to his scheme, Hades decides he has to eliminate him before he can grow up and become strong enough to challenge him. However, there's a catch. Since Hercules is a god, Hades can't just kill him outright. This dilemma leads him to come up with a clever but twisted plan to turn Hercules into a mortal, thinking that will make it easier to deal with him. But as we all know, things don't go exactly as planned, and his efforts to eliminate Hercules don't really work out the way he hoped. This elaborate scheme is really Hades's only shot at taking down Zeus and claiming Olympus for himself. Despite his evil intentions, we can't deny that Hades is a funny character in the movie, with his over-the-top personality adding a lot of entertainment to the story. His witty remarks and dramatic flair make him memorable and enjoyable to watch. 
but when you dig deeper and look at his backstory, it becomes clear how all these factors led him to become the villain we see in Hercules.